Backstage again at the Iowa City Jazz Festival for 2015, the third and final day getting underway in just a few minutes, or actually we've uh, just enjoyed, I should say, the uh, the Atlantis Quartet out of Minneapolis. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks. I guess we have we have three or four, three of four of you. This is Zach. Yes. Zach Harris, who is the uh, guitarist, and uh, Brandon. Brandon, me, okay, yeah. <laughs> and who is the reed player? And Chris yeah, is the drummer, and, or the bass player, and Pete <laughs> is the Pete Henning is the uh, the drummer. Um, talk a bit about your uh, inception. How'd you guys all get together uh, back in the day, and, and where did you come from as far as education? And, and uh, were you all Minneapolis sure. folks uh, up to no, begin with? No, in or? fact, um, most of us were transplants when we first started the band. It was 2006, and myself and Brandon had just moved to Minneapolis. And Pete had been there for a while, and the three of us uh, originally got together just to start trying some tunes, we, uh, some original compositions that we wanted to kind of work out, suss out. And uh, we had a different bass player at the time, but uh, a couple years later, uh, Chris ended up joining. So um, the whole idea was really about trying to make some new music. You know, we'd all been playing jazz and and it's traditional sense, but we wanted to explore some new things. You know, we were all a lot younger then. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're so old now. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> relatively speaking. So. A little bit. I'm the oldest, the wisest. Yeah, I think uh, I read uh, Bill Mikowski of Jazz Times described it as modern jazz renegades uh, shifting nimbly from punk jazz aesthetic to ECM-ish sensitivity. Yeah. That says it all, huh? Right. <laughs> Across the board. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Could be worse. That's, <laughs> that's what happens when you have four different composers, I think, you know, and, and an everybody with an open mind to try out what the other guys are coming up with and mm -hmm. work on it. And sometimes it's punk bop and sometimes it's, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so then you all write. We do, you, do. And do you bring in fully formed compositions, or do you kind of suss them out in the, in the studio? Uh, that just depends on the tune itself. If the person who brought it in feels like it's really solid, then we just go with it the way they came up with it. But a lot of times we go through a process where we work on it. This might take several rehearsals, you know, too, where we just work on it, and then we develop ideas, and we make suggestions, and then we make it the Atlantis version of that yeah. song. So, And a lot of the tunes continue to develop, you know, over the years of playing them. And um, we have we did a live album in 2011, which had some of the songs from a studio album we did in 2009. And they're quite different, you know, just from playing them for two and a half more years. Sure, and Maybe sure. we should try this. Or <laughs> Absolutely. We're tired of that. Things get stale after a while. Yeah, oh, right. right. Ben Are Allison, you? who's here later on today, has recorded his song Tour of the Different Times, and everyone's different. Sure. For sure. Know. Yeah. And that's, I think, a hallmark of a great improviser and a great jazz musician anyways, is that you're willing to take the same vehicle and reinvent it many times just to try to find new ways to play over it and around yeah. with it. You mentioned your live CD that was at uh, done at the Artist Quarter. Was that when the Artist Quarter still existed? Yeah, and 2011. Kinda, yeah. What's the What's the scene like up there in Minneapolis? I know they closed a year or two ago, didn't they? And uh, they left a void, I would imagine. Yeah, it was about a year and a half ago, and the scene has continued to be strong. Um, several folks, kind of, we, we've kind of had like a guerrilla jazz scene uh, <laughs> since that happened. You know, some folks found some different places to make things happen. Uh, a trumpet player named Steve Kenny uh, started a series at a place called The Black Dog mm. on Saturday nights and has now started another one uh, at a place called uh, The Nicolette on Fridays. Mm. Um, I've been involved in some different things, Jazz at Studio Z and a place called Jazz Central. But I think things are on the up and up. Uh, the Dakota took over the old artist quarter space and is opening up a new place there called Vu Carre, oh. um, which I think the grand opening is next weekend, actually, uh, middle of July. And um, things are looking good. I don't think they're going to do strictly jazz, but I think it's going to be, you know, a third to half of the programming, which is great. And the room, I was in there for the Twin Cities Jazz Fest. They had a jam session there. Uh, last week, and the room looks nice. You know, they've done a good job of kind of keeping some of some of its nuance and charm while updating some things. Yeah. And uh, I think it's going to be 
a good thing. Because I know that the Dakota had backed off a bit from some of their jazz and are bringing some other folks in. But right. I guess they still have jazz up there, but, you know, it's kind of a blend of, sure, I yeah. suppose, just like what the new place is going to be like, huh? Yeah, and I think that they're planning on focusing on, uh, in the new place, on more of the, you know, regional scene um, rather than the big ticket shows, the national shows, which tend to be the majority of the jazz that still happens at the, the Dakota. So Vucare, I think, is going to be um, a little bit more of uh, bands like us and our other projects that we're in and different folks from the scene. So optimistic. Talk about the other projects that you guys have uh, have been doing. I know you mentioned you had a gig yeah. uh, somewhere before. What, what, what band well, was that? Oh, I was just uh, actually teaching all week oh. at in Shell Lake, Wisconsin at the Shell Lake Arts Center for a jazz and combo week oh, uh, okay. up there. Uh, it was high school and middle school oriented. Um, and we all teach in that capacity oh, okay. um, privately and in group sessions. Uh, I have, I'm in a bunch of different projects. And so guitar trios with a couple of different guys, a guy named Dean McGraw and a guy named Chris Olson, both with a drummer named Jay Epstein. I have my own, another trio called Good Vibes Trio. It's a vibes bass and drums trio uh, that uh, I put out a record with that trio last year. and. Then in 2012, I put out a quintet record with Brandon and a couple other horn players and my brother playing drums, and that band is called Red Five. Wow. And what are you doing, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like everybody else, I play in, in many different groups. I have a couple other uh, things I do with Dave King, the drummer from The Bad Plus, who, sure. who resides in Minneapolis. Uh, and one of his groups is The Trucking Company. He has another saxophone player, Chris Speed, who's kind of pretty well known from New York. and a lot of his own projects and another new project that we just started. It's more of a free avant-garde wow. kind of project. But yeah, there's a lot. I think we all experiment and play with a lot of different people. It's one of the ways we're not all on the road a lot. So one of the other ways to kind of, you know, make money and collaborate with our friends in town and, and do those kind of things. Since we all have families, we're trying to stay a little bit more around Minneapolis. but. We also just, Atlanta's Quartet just won the McKnight grant, so we're looking at um, touring more and doing a little more stuff in Europe. We haven't really oh. done a whole lot of that kind of thing yet. We've done a few small tours in New York and a few things like that, but nothing, nothing wow. on a larger scale. So we're looking forward to kind of spending some of that money and helping us kind of forward the, the, the music. So. Wow, that's great. Yeah, and as a band, we're also trying to kind of champion um, a little indie jazz label that we started uh, a couple years ago called Shifting Paradigm Records. And um, so we're all involved in some different projects on that too. In fact, uh, a friend of ours, Corey Healy, a drummer, Iowa native, uh, mm. who's down here this weekend. Uh, he has a record coming out early next year um, called The Beautiful Sunshine Band that Brandon and I are on. Uh, a drummer, another drummer named Lars Larson has a band called Man Crush. Also with Brandon and I in there. Uh, we just recorded that. And um, I play in this thing with Chris called Tall Tales with a really great guitar player, Dean Granros, who is also in that Vector families that Brandon was talking about. Kind of on the avant-garde leaning side. Um, but there's, there's a lot of really great stuff. I mean, there are a ton of great players, but we all kind of tend to you know, cross over and blend quite a bit, as you can imagine. Um, and it's good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I didn't realize you guys were doing all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I guess you have to, as long as you don't want to be on the road and right. you know, play as much as possible, like you guys said. It's right. Uh, Absolutely. So are you going to do another, a new CD with some of that grant money then? We uh, are. We're planning to head out to uh, record in New York in December. Um, so right now we're just kind of checking out engineers and studios that we like and uh, be trying to line some, some of that stuff up. So. And the music similar to what you're doing now, or have you moved on? Yeah, some, some well, you know, things are always moving on, hopefully, uh, and sure. progressing. So, yeah, we have some new things that we'll be playing today that we haven't recorded that will likely end up on there. And then we're also just uh, doing a lot of work right now on trying to write some new stuff and, mm -hmm. and uh, getting together as a group um, and, and doing some deep, deep dive days, as we're calling them. <laughs> Where, you know, because we all are dealing with families and lots of different projects, sometimes it's hard to create that time to really dig in on some new material. So sure. fortunately, with, uh, with that, we'll be able to do some more of that over the next few months. 
Well, sounds like you guys are, are busy, so busy. Yeah. But, uh, send send us your stuff when when you uh, produce that stuff. We'll, we'll have to hear it and, and play it for you. Of course, I mean, we'll do. Yeah. We can do our small part here. <laughs> Wonderful. So, uh, Wonderful. So what's the how what's the Twin Cities Jazz Festival? I've never been to that before. Is it a, is it like a one spot or is it a different places, different it, times? It's all in St. Paul. Oh, in St. Paul. Um, it used to be in both cities, but for the last several years, it's just been in St. Paul, and it's really grown quite a bit. Uh, this year was a tremendous turnout. The weather helped. It was very nice, mm. and um, th basically they have uh, the main stage in Mears Park with like a side stage right behind it. Mm. But now they are doing like a s kind of a second main stage on the steps of the Union Depot, um, okay. which is you know f just a couple few blocks away, and then they have uh, stuff happening in all the clubs kind of around you know not necessarily jazz clubs but just right. anywhere that sure. has a, a spot for music, um, which is great. And this year they brought in uh, Dr. John to play at mm -hmm. the new St. Paul Saints Stadium. Oh, neat! Which was a really smart move. It brought in an extra like five six thousand people. Yeah. And then they just kind of filtered out into the festival itself. And um, we played on this kind of new stage that they're building up, the Union Depot. And we had an excellent turnout because it was right after that, that show let yeah. out. So, yeah. Great. Good time. Good time. For Speaking sure. of the Saints, do they still have the pick that takes the ball out to the mound? Just they sure do. Do they really? <laughs> they, they brought it over from the other stadium. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing about the festival, and it, just like this one, is all free. You know, everyone, anyone can come. There's now light rail that can get people from Minneapolis over to St. Paul. Oh, so the infrastructure is in place to have it grow. And these guys are working really hard to get a lot of grant money and things like that to make sure that they can maintain the level of being able to get an act like Dr. John or something like that. So just, and I hope they stay on the jazz side a little bit more. I think that's their intention. But, you know, sometimes these festivals get to the place where suddenly they're booking the Dave Matthews Band right. and calling it at the Jazz Festival. And you're like, wait, I mean, I like <laughs> Dave Matthews, but that's not jazz. So anyway, it's... I mean, Dr. Uh, John is still a very right, well, jazzy New Orleans yeah, thing. And, sure. that's, and that's I think that's the, the, the New Orleans model is a sure. great way to look at that because the Jazz and Heritage Festival is one of the best in the country, you know? So, right. Yeah. But you're right. They got a lot of non-jazz acts that you go yeah sure. well that's odd yeah. <laughs> i guess you do what you got to do <laughs> exactly yeah. well guys i'm sure you're uh you're uh, uh we're getting due ready up to here you're due up here in a little <laughs> bit zach and uh, brandon and chris thanks for taking a few minutes and uh, having a chat and i hope you have a great set and uh keep the stuff coming to us thanks so much right, thanks, 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 thanks a lot have a great day